The Crayon Man, the true story of the invention of Crayola crayons by Natasha Bebo, illustrated by Steven Salerno. The Crayon Man. Once there was a man who saw color everywhere. He noticed the yellow-orange petals of the black-eyed Susans in his garden, and he marveled at the rich scarlet-red tones of the cardinal's feathers. He admired the deep blue-greens of the waves in the sea. Color made him really, really happy. But all day long at work, all he saw was black. Black dust, black tar, black smoke, black ink, black dye, black shoe polish. His company sold carbon black, a new kind of pigment or colored substance made from the soot of burning oil and natural gas. People used it in printing eeks, electric street lamps, and stove and shoe polish. It also made rubber car tires last much longer. His name was Edward Binney, and he was an inventor. He worked with his cousin C. Harold Smith. Together, they were Binney and Smith. Harold was a great salesman. He loved to travel the world. Edwin was curious. He had a knack for listening and making what people needed. Edwin invented a new kind of expensive slate pencil that wrote very smoothly. It was gray. Children loved it. He invented a kind of chalk that wasn't dusty and didn't crumble. It was white. <gasps> Teachers loved it. He invented a wax crayon that would write on wood and paper packaging. It was really, really black. People loved it. Paper was expensive in the 1800s, so children wrote with slate pencils or chalk on slates, small handheld blackboards. Hmm. So when everyone, including Edwin's wife Alice, told him that children needed better, cheaper crayons, he listened. They said, the crayons we have are big, dull, and clumsy. The lumps of colored clay make only fat, clunky lines. And the artist's crayons from Europe are far too expensive. They crumble and break easily. Some are even poisonous. Ugh. Alice used to be a school teacher, so she knew what children needed. She encouraged Edwin to invent the crayons. Edwin thought about his company's inventions. What you drew in a picture with their gray slate pencil, it rubbed off in the drop of a hat. And when you drew a picture with their white chalk, it smudged everywhere. If you drew a picture with Edwin's new, really black crayon, it was, well, really black. And none of these inventions was as good for drawing in color. Hmm. <gasps> ah, so Edwin listened. And Edwin invented in a small stone mill in Pennsylvania in a top-secret lab. Edwin's team experimented. How could they make better, stronger crayons? Melted paraffin wax? Perhaps. The first colored crayons invented in Europe were made from a mixture of charcoal and oil, so they broke easily. To make stronger crayons, Edwin tried using wax instead. Hmm. Now, for the crayon colors, grinding, grinding, grinding up rocks and minerals into fine powders. Mixing, mixing slate for gray, earth for yellow, red, and brown, <gasps> perhaps. Oh, yes, and lapis for blue. Pounding, sifting, and heating the colored power powders. Would they be bright enough? Edwin's team kept on trying. They kept on experimenting. Ground up rocks and minerals made bright pigments for crayons. Red iron oxide for red, yellow iron oxide for yellow, varied shades of red iron oxide for brown, carbon black for black, zinc oxide for white, and imported ultramarine made from lapis lazuli for blue. Hmm. They came home covered in color. They experimented some more and discovered a pinch of this pigment, a sploosh of that one, a little hotter, a little cooler, and voila! 
Lots of different shades. Now there were greens, oranges, violets, and pinks too. Edwin came home covered in color. <laughs> to make orange, green, and violet, chemists blended various pigments of clays. Some minerals changed color when heated. Plus, the length of time the mixtures were left off cool, left to cool, created different colors too. Huh. Hmm. In a large tub at the mill, Edwin's team measured out the ingredients. Melted wax, clay to thicken, something for texture, colored powders, each just the right amount, every time to make a top secret formula. Slowly, carefully, stirring by hand, they pur poured the special formula into thin, crayon-shaped molds, smaller than any other inventors, just the right size for children's hands. The mixture cooled and hardened, and Edwin watched. Edwin waited. Children might eat or chew the crayons and get sick. So Edwin's team experimented to find new, safe, non-toxic colors and materials. Finally, one summer, evening of June 1903, Edwin came home covered in color and announced that he'd invented a new kind of colored crayon. But what should he call it? Alice had an idea. She said, let's mix the French word for cray, for stick of chalk, and the word oula, from the word, word oolaginous, meaning oily, like the oily texture, of the crayon wax to invent a new word. <gasps> Crayola. Crayola? Edwin listened. Hmm, Crayola. <gasps> Binny and Smith shipped out the first Crayola crayon boxes. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, brown, and black. Eight colored crayons for only a nickel. Edwin waited. Would children like them? Children did. Now they could draw a tiny green caterpillar or the big blue sky. Their drawings wouldn't smudge and they wouldn't rub out. They were bright and could last a long, long time. By the 1990s, inventors had figured out how to make cheaper paper from wood pulp. So children could now draw on paper instead of just slate. Excitement over the new colorful invention spread like wildfire. Admirers from far and wide flocked to marvel at Binny and Smith's inventions at the St. Louis World's Fair. The company's dustless chalk even won a gold medal. Proudly, Edwin and Harold showed it off, especially in their new Crayola crayon boxes. Ooh, ah. Hmm. Every day, Edwin brought colorful bouquets from his garden to inspire the Crayola team. They made crayons in even more different shades, and later children Asked, they, later, they asked children to help name some of them. Ooh, tropical rainforest, robin egg split, robin's egg blue, Granny Smith apple, macaroni and cheese. To celebrate their 19th anniversary, Crayola held a color na naming competition. The six-year-old winner coined tropical rainforest. Other color names created by children included robin's egg blue, Tickle me pink and macaroni and cheese. <laughs> At last, because of Edward Benny, the man who saw color everywhere, who had a knack for listening and making what people needed, children all around the world could reach for just the right shade. Sun glow, wisteria, jungle green, screaming green, razzmatazz, robin's egg blue, wild watermelon, marvelous, purple mountain's majesty, cadet blue, lavender, timber wolf, to draw anything. How crayons are made today. In 1903, Crayola crayons were made carefully in small lots, labeled and packed into boxes by hand and sold to schools. Today, machines produce an average of 12 million crayons a day. That's over 8,333 crayons a minute in more than 120 different colors. They are sold in over 80 countries around the world. 
train cars deliver paraffin wax to the Crayola factory in Easton, Pennsylvania. The wax is heated and the clear melted liquid is stored in tall silos ready to be pumped inside. Next, the workers pour colored powders called pigments into vats filled with the liquid wax. Add clay to thicken it, then mix. The wax pigment mixture is pumped into a huge mold. It looks like a giant circular muffin tin. The mix fills all the 101 small crayon shaped holes in each section. Wow. Cold water flows underneath the mold to cool the wax and harden it into crayon shapes. A large blade scrapes off extra wax to be reused later. Next, the crayons are pushed up from the mold. A robotic arm then moves them to the labeling machine. Pre-printed sticky labels on huge drums are wrapped around each crayon two and a half times. Workers check the finished crayons and store them in large cardboard cartons, one for each color. There's blue. Next, to make up the Crayola crayon boxes, workers place the crayons in the right order in the collating machine. A chute drops one of each color needed onto the conveyor belt. A robotic arm opens the flattened package, green and yellow Crayola boxes, and sends them onto the conveyor belt. Another arm pushes the collated crayons into each box and closes it. The box moves down the conveyor belt to be packed into large cartons. Crayola ships the finished crayons to the store and they are sold to you. The end.